I'm going to show you how to start mining on your MacBook. Um, just a warning to start off, mining on your MacBook can make some pretty big heat. So make sure you're running your fans and keeping the MacBook in a cool area. Don't mine um, without at least monitoring your temperatures to make sure you, know, you don't damage your MacBook. Um, 13 inch MacBooks, make sure you have an integrated graphics card that supports OpenCL. So I have an Intel HD 4000. Uh, 15 inch MacBook models have the secondary ATI um, graphics. So you can mine, it'll be way more efficient to mine on that graphics card than it would be to mine on your integrated graphics. Uh, I have a mid 2012 MacBook Pro. It's the 13 inch model, uh, 2.9 iCore 7. I put 8 gigs of RAM in it. So I'm just going to be mining on my Intel HD 4000. It's like 15 to 20 cash rate. So it's not very high, but hey, um, I'm pool mining, so I make something. It's more for fun than it is for profit at this point. So this video shouldn't be taken as a way to make money. Uh, you would need a rig that's uh, quite a bit different than what is set up here. So, anyways, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is get a um, get a wallet. So head to the website. Very easy. Just Google. Right. Build the wallet. So Windows, you know, they have a whole bunch of different options here for you. Once that's done and it's synced, so you'll have your wallet open here. You're basically good to go. Uh, you go over to uh, Much Receive, so you can choose and create different addresses so you know where your funds are coming from. Now, once you're set up there and you'd like to get some coins, first thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a miner. So I like Mac Miner. It's uh, I think that it offers most of what an you know a novice user would need. Uh, you can do some command line, but this here is a GUI based, so it's you know multi-purpose. You'll be able to mine uh, different coins, uh, including Bitcoin, if you have a rig that's worth mining even Bitcoin. So I already have this installed here. Um, assuming if you're watching this video, you know how to install applications. So once you have now your miner, uh, the last thing you're going to need is a pool. A pool is because mining on your own can be, you know, uh, a struggle. You might not hit a block for a year. So uh, offering shares to a pool will get you small payouts but they'll be more frequent than a large payout maybe <laughs> as the blockchain becomes the difficulty raises the chances of your lower end especially lower end graphic cards hitting the a block are become very very slim so pool mining is what i would suggest i have a great pool here um, i will i'll just show you the pool to find it on its own so it's the official uh, pool chain, so it actually supports the original blockchain here. You can find many pools. The one pool that I am using right now. Let's see. It's because I'm logged in, it just keeps pulling me to their website. Let's see if it'll do it like this. Here we go. So here you can see the difficulties, the, the shares submitted by different users and the current um, Bitcoin to Dogecoin price. So you can go mining pool. What you're going to want to do is head down here. When I log out here, you'll want to go sign up. So make sure you you know enter this information in. Uh, remember this four digit pin. Don't use your bank card number, but use a number that will make sense to you that you won't forget. This is going to be needed for payouts, and you can't change this number again. There's no two-step verification to make sure you inputted it correctly, so just don't lose it. 
because if you do and you mine and mine and mine and you eventually go to you know cash out your pool and you don't remember this pin you're not going to get your coins so just be very careful at this this pin is important write it down remember this pin <laughs> anyways uh to accept the terms and conditions you just hit the x there uh, you'll get an email from them and then you'll be able to log in right away without confirming you can use your email address that uh, you signed up with so now you'll enter um your main dashboard here this will show the current hash rate which i have i'm mining another cryptocurrency right now on my other rig in front of me so you won't actually see uh, a hash rate on this one unless one of my other workers decides to turn their systems on anyways uh as you scroll down here you can see your rounds per share and then your overall uh your confirmed coins so i do have some um coins sitting here confirmed and then unconfirmed just means that uh they're verifying the block um and distributing you know to each member so your unconfirmed will eventually confirm and then at a certain threshold either you'll get a payout or you can request a manual payout for a small fee uh, and then your sh round, uh, round shared. Uh, most of this is something, you know, if you're not really too interested in the technical side, I would have just worry about this here, your blocks and your payout. So you see your current payout. This will show here before it shows down there. The lower the difficulty, which is actually a little lower today than normal, the better. And then uh, your average block time too, which is... I know with the new 1.6 has improved quite a bit. So uh, moving on to your account. So your account here, you'll have AP key. You're going to have um, your payment address. This is where you would do a manual cash out, your password change. So it does look like they do do a reset pin. Um, most pools don't. So that's kind of cool. I stress a lot not to forget your pin. Uh, I've never actually got to use this feature yet, so I'm quite interested to see how that would work. And then uh, workers would be the last area here that I'm going to show you now. These are just miners that I have. See, I do have one miner that is up. You'll need to create different miners for different um, mining so if you have a MacBook and then a desktop, I would suggest two miners. Don't set it as one worker. Uh, it's easier to keep track of who's dropping what and you'll be able to see hardware errors which could negatively negatively affect your payout and you could correct that way versus having it pool together and you can't tell which unit is giving you you know your issues so I would definitely recommend that once you're all the way through all of this and I know explaining all of this has kind of been long and arduous you're finally ready to go getting started in the help menu here will give you the pool information now they are going to offer um, recommended miners now CG miner is a command line miner uh, you have to have the version 3.72 which the developers unfortunately not hosting on their website anymore googling it will you can find it and then a CPU miner pooler has created a CPU miner that's been used for quite a while. If you have no integrated graphics with OpenCL support on a Macintosh, as a last resort, you can mine with your CPU. Uh, CPU mining, your, your graphics, even integrated graphics, normally will do a better job than what your CPU can just do. Uh, the tasks are different in a way where the of the way this the processor handles them so your graphics card is way more efficient at uh, scrape mining so just that as a thought maybe if you have a real real badass cpu sitting on the side idle and bored you could throw it on there i mean it's not going to hurt anyways so your low and high cash rates now from my understanding they were correcting this yeah, it does look that. So 99.9% .9 of you miners are going to want to hang out in the low hash rates. If you have, say, a butterfly, one of those special units or whatever they call them, that's putting out a, like, you know, a 1.2 gigahertz, you know, output, then go for a high hash rate. If not, stick to your low. So basically... 
this would be if we used CG Miner as an example, or a CUDA Miner, which is a, a G, or an AMD, not an AMD, <laughs> an NVIDIA-based miner, which uses the CUDA technology to kind of assist in uh, making them a little more efficient, because NVIDIA really sucks for mining. So like I will show you here. So we'll get Mac Miner up now. You're going to open up. It'll automatically bring you up into this GPU menu. This is the basic menu when you open Mac Miner. Uh, you want to go to the gears here. Now, I said I have an Intel HD 4000. I really suggest you Google the crap out of your graphics card. Look for other users. I know my work size at 32 runs great for me. Normally, I set my intensity to 10. Never anything higher. If your graphics, if you notice your graphics start lagging on your computer really severely, lean back. Uh, this one doesn't really give you a hardware error readout, so you gotta kind of keep an eye on it. You can, yeah, the thread currency and even shaders too, like your shaders, you can get to know how many shaders your graphics card supports. So, for instance, my 7950 is. 1024 I believe shaders which is an AMD Radeon but this Intel HD 4000 only has 16 shaders available same with the gap lookup I mean I leave these to automatic I find it does its job but you can change these settings um, and this too so if you set your workload size and you enable it here and then you start your miner and you can't figure out why it didn't make an effect and you still see some real poor rates make sure you have override default on i couldn't figure that out for a while and i'm like oh i guess that option would make sense right you can also disable the enable quiet i think i had that enabled and it doesn't come enable on its own that should tell you if you're having any hardware errors as well as your debug output so you can see if your intensity is too high because if the intensity is too high your graphics will just it'll just fail halfway through the process and even if you were able to find a share and you submit it it could potentially be rejected because of improper data so it's you know always good if you have to go to shade like say nine versus 10 because you're getting a lot less hardware errors you're actually going to benefit more from a lower cache rate than you are going to from a higher hash rate right because the higher hash rates can just get rejected because you're giving invalid you know so it's a lot more complicated to explain than i'll keep going on about anyways make sure you really look into your gpu settings the last thing is the pool settings so right here in your pool settings You'll have the setup, so for Bitcoins, you know, Litecoins. And then these are a little different if you want to get into, you know, these other optional currencies. I'm more interested in the more commonly known, you know, Litecoin. I'm doing Dogecoin here. So uh, my pool information is already set up. It's exactly this right here. So I would just take out beginning at the stratum. I don't need to um, specify HTTP. This is not an HTTP. This is a stratum plus TCP. That's why it's specified. So if you're trying to connect to your pool and you can't figure out why, make sure you take... Oops. Wow, look at that. TTP or TTPS. Take that out. See? Take it out. Your worker or so username is going to be your one of your worker IDs. This is where you would specify. So this is my MacBook here. And then my worker password, which can really be anything. And that's it. So I save. It'll tell me it's saved. These settings are ready. So assuming everything is correct and I know it is, all I have to do is just hit start. So it's going to tell me that uh, the BFG miners begin. And you'll actually see right here as my thread begins. And there we go. I'm now mining. 
uh, the accept. So if I hit a share, I'll get the accept will change here. If I don't, it'll say reject <laughs> or nothing. <laughs> And yeah, so in here is where I would watch for hardware errors to make sure I've tuned and I know that my current rig is set to what it can handle as 12, you know, chaos. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's an Intel HD 4000, so that's not bad. But uh, anyways, so I hope this kind of helps a lot of you beginners, uh, even enthusiasts, guys who just maybe you just want a few coins just because everybody else has got a few and you're kind of wondering how to get into it. This was a little longer than a quick two minute video. This really did kind of explain step by step how you can get going. Um, keep again keep an eye on your temperatures as you can see here I really really like Mac fan controller and my temperatures are very hot right now uh, 96 Celsius so if that's Fahrenheit for you Americans is right here that's 213 203 so on an average here so I'll be making sure my RPMs are consistent full bore <laughs> there we go all right uh thanks for watching this video if you have any other questions throw them in the comments i've got plenty of time to help some of you guys out uh if any of you are more interested in my other rigs i can show what a more efficient mining rig would look like what kind of investments and maybe how you could even turn one into your own i use a 2010 mac pro so that is a mac pro 4.1 and i have like i was saying the intel or the intel amd 7690 or you know 7650 and it's overclocked and i it's a little more advanced than what basically this is uh, running on windows or linux so watch for some of those videos and i will definitely share more uh when i can again thanks for watching uh you can subscribe if you like i plan to do lots more videos in the future cheers